Hey, in this video, I'm going to be outlining 10 of the best practices for financial modeling in Excel. A little bit about me. My name is Adam Huxema. I'm the co-founder of Projection Hub, and we help uh, founders create financial projections for uh, potential investors and lenders. And we've been doing this for a little over a decade now and uh, learned a lot about financial modeling along the way and just wanted to hopefully provide some tips, whether you're brand new to financial modeling and just trying to learn some basics or whether you've been doing this for a long time, just some things that I've learned along the way. And with that, kind of outline these best practices. And, and when it makes sense, I'm going to kind of demonstrate them as well in, in the templates. I've got a, one of our software as a service here that I'm going to be using to demonstrate. The first best practice is that you really need to know what the objective of the projections are, right? And this is my most common question that I ask a potential client is, what's the purpose of your projections? Are you trying to get a loan? Are you trying to raise investment? Are you trying to do internal planning? Because that objective is really going to determine what we display, how we display it, what kind of research we're doing, how much time we're spending on it. Um, a lot goes into uh, what the output should look like based on who it's for, what the objective is. So you gotta know the objective. That's the <laughs> key number one. Number two, Simplicity is key. Now, I was just taking a look at another client's financial model and that they had purchased from another company. And uh, boy, it was a, a complex model. I'm sure it could do some really cool stuff, but there were there was tab after tab of instructions and text and disclaimers and act, points to videos and resources on how to use it. And I thought, man, this is so complex and probably so powerful that it's completely unusable. <laughs> I just couldn't, I couldn't even use it. And keeping the model as simple as you can, but as complex as necessary sounds, maybe sounds simple, sounds kind of dumb, but I think this is a key point here. All right, next is consistent structure. And so I'll show you here and I'll move out of the way, the way we have this template structured. So we start with an instructions tab, and then we get into input different input tabs where we input our assumptions. So all the input tabs have a similar structure there. The tab itself is the same color. So the user kind of knows, okay, they, these are the input tabs. We notice that all of the assumptions that you can change are cells that are highlighted in blue. So that's also purposeful. That's a consistent structure that we have. And then the outputs are in green tabs. And so we can see these are all output reports or financial statements. And again, follow a consistent structure. All right, the next thing I wanna point out is that you need to uh, name your ranges so that someone can kind of scroll through the financial model and see what's happening in each section. And so what I mean by that is you'll see up here, so we've got this section that we name as customer acquisition. So we know that what we're doing here is going through customer acquisition from advertising, customer acquisition from sales reps and other sources. And then we get into revenue. So we can kind of, kind of again, see uh, revenue from setup fees and services. We can see recurring revenue. So you see the structure almost like you're writing an article with, you know, headings and subheadings, right? We follow a similar approach in kind of naming the, the ranges and the sections of the model so that someone can scroll through this quickly because there's a lot of cells here, right? They should be able to scroll through it quickly and kind of understand what's happening. The next thing you want to do is avoid hard coding. So you don't want to input numbers directly into formulas. Uh, instead, you know, use uh, input cells or assumptions, right? So oftentimes, you know, you could see, you could see a situation where a user might have new customers from advertising, right? And they could just put in, we're going to get 10 new customers from advertising in month six, right? When you look at this, it's not just hard coded in there. It's an equation. It's based on a set of assumptions and this set of assumptions is based on another set of assumptions. It's building on top of it a set of assumptions from the bottom up. We're not just, we don't have situations where we just, at least we tried to avoid situations where we just say, we're going to do a million dollars in revenue in this month. And that's the assumption. No, we need to show how we get to that. Right. So avoid that hard coding as much as possible. You want to have uh, clear assumptions. So as much as possible, you can kind of see how we're showing our work here. We're showing uh, what our ad spend is, we're showing our cost per click, we're showing our growth rates, organic website visitors. So again, now, the, I think the next, to take this even to the next level, when you can, when possible, if you have good research on this, so if you said, okay, I looked at uh, a competitor's website and they're getting, you know, a thousand organic visitors per month, insert that as a comment. So if you right click 
can add a comment here and say, you know, um, competitor XYZ gets 1,000 visitors per month. And so now when you're, when somebody's going through your model and they say, okay, you know, you have hard coded in this situation, you have hard coded in how many organic website visitors you're going to get. So when you do have hard coded numbers in there, it's great to back that up with a comment, with some sort of data or assumption or research that you've done when possible. All right, next is air checks. And so you could kind of go crazy with this where you could have some diagnostic tab and, you know, have it turn red if you have certain airs. From my perspective, what I like to do is just keep it simple. I typically look at the balance sheet. So here's the balance sheet. And I want to make sure that at the end of the model that my assets here, so my total assets equals my total liabilities and equity. In other words, it balances. Um, if my balance sheet balances, that probably means there's not some major error in the structure of the model. Like I haven't broken something in the structure of the model. Now the assumptions might be crazy. So I'm not saying that the assumptions are automatically correct if your balance sheet balances, but hopefully there's not a an error in the calculations, right? That's what we're looking at here for air check. So that's my quick tip to find errors is I look at the balance sheet to see if it balances or not. The next tip and best practice is documentations. Again, you could have a whole bunch of assumptions kind of built into one equation. And we do this sometimes. So you can kind of, kind of see that here. You can see this equation here that is relatively complex. It's using assumptions from all, all these different fields in this table. And when that happens, a, a good practice is to uh, document or comment somewhere how this is being calculated, how this uh, number is being calculated if it's not clear. So you can see like our example up here, uh, this number is pretty clear how it's being calculated. It's only looking at two different numbers here, just multiplying two numbers together. The equation is very simple. Sometimes in an effort to save space or try to make the template look more elegant, <laughs> you know, not as many rows, we use tables like this, but that can create where we have these pretty complex equations. And so that's where, when you do that, you want to document that, whether we document that in a video explaining how it's working or document it in a comment within the sheet itself. All right, the next tip here is scenario and sensitivity analysis. So I will show you in this template, we have this, what we call our investor dashboard. And so here's an example of how you could do some different uh, scenario testing. In this example, what we do is the current model we can see the assumptions from the current model here in the white text. Now, let's say you sent this to an investor and the investor says, okay, I want to play around with these assumptions. So I think you're going to have uh, more customers. And so I'm going to change this to say 500 customers here. And I'm going to change this to a thousand customers. And so the investor can make changes to assumptions here without changing the core assumptions that you put into the model. And then the way we display that is in a modified income statement. So here's what the income statement would look like based on the investor putting in their own set of assumptions versus what the income statement looks like originally. So you can see here in the first year, you know, after I made just those small changes to the number of customers, revenue here is 7.3 million versus 1.4 um, for the original income statement. So this is one way to do some scenario analysis and testing. Setting this up, if you don't already have this, is a good bit of work and uh, can take take quite a bit of time. So I'm not sure, I'm not convinced that creating, if you're creating a financial model from scratch, I'm not sure building a scenario analysis dashboard like this is really worth your time. My suggestion is typically to just save a couple different copies of the file. So you save a copy that's your base case, you save another copy where you, that's your best case scenario and you just change the assumptions and you save a third copy called your worst case scenario and change your assumptions again. And you can pull all three up and look at them at the same time. And I think that ends up being a whole lot simpler than trying to build some complex dashboard like this that allows you to, within the same Excel file, play with different scenarios. So hopefully that, that makes some sense. And then the last point I wanna make here is just how to think about protecting or locking down the template. So you'll notice a lot of templates will have sections of the template that are, are locked. And so the user can't 
change them and that's an effort to protect them from themselves really to keep them from screwing something up in the template that is not an approach that i have used historically i you know personally when i get a template that is locked i find that really frustrating <laughs> especially if it's a you know something i paid for and now it's locked and I, I can't get in there and see how it works or change it for my own situation so i personally don't love locking templates what i typically recommend is that you try to highlight the sections you know so we've got highlighted in blue these are the sections that you should change and so it's telling the user yeah you could come up here and change some of these other numbers that are not highlighted in blue but you're gonna change the structure of the template right and likewise i we also hide tabs so we you can hide certain tabs so if i look down here and i click unhide and what we'll see here is that we have a few different hidden tabs so we'll see this calc tab and this calc tab has you know hundreds of rows of calculations it's kind of the the brains of the template right um, we don't need the user to be in here playing around with this but we also don't need to lock it down because they might want to come in here and make a change and so what i like to do is hide tab so you can right click and click hide but don't actually lock it down that's my personal I guess, best practice preference. Um, so anyway, those are our best practices based on building a whole lot of financial models. I hope that's been uh, somewhat helpful, maybe common sense for you, but um, wanted to show you what we do and, and how we like to think about financial modeling. Now, if you need a financial projection template built for a startup or small business that's looking to raise capital from investors or lenders, we hope you think of us here at Projection Hub. We've got a library of about 100 different financial projection templates that are ready-made for you. And so feel free to go down in the description of the video below and we'll put a link to those templates so you can grab that and get a head start and use them yourself. All right, if you have any questions, please reach out to us at support at projectionhub.com. Thanks.